<laughs> Good morning. Welcome to another stream. I'm late to gaming. And uh, this morning, hopefully, we're going to finish up the uh, available content in Vincent, The Secret of Myers. So this game has four chapters that are currently available. It uh, is planned for, as I understand it, it is planned for six chapters, but the developer has taken a bit of a hiatus from developing new content uh, for the game. So I'm not sure when the uh, remaining chapters will be available, but I've been enjoying the game enough that I wanted to go ahead and play through what is there and hope that the uh, the rest is released at some point. So um, where we left off is we're inside the Myers Corporation and we've just um, kind of faced off with Vincent and have been learning about his involvement in uh, things that have happened and also a bit about our own past and who we really are. And um, we were just given our new objective, which is to locate the secret chamber. And that's where we're picking up with uh, things today. So it looks like here we have the elevator. The elevator. That's what I took to get to the basement. Draco and I were pursued by some sort of monster on our way here. I had no clue what happened after the crash. I don't know what happened to Draco either. Hmm. There's no need to worry about Draco, Benora. Okay. You know where he is? No. But what I do know is he's not as vulnerable as you imagine him to be. Okay. So according to Vincent, Draco's okay. We also have the uh, elevator control. The elevator button. It's no longer working. That's not really a surprise looking at the, the state of the elevator. First look around. Alright. So here we have a desk and computer and a bookshelf and not much else. A computer. Hmm. Looks like you need to follow the on-screen instructions to enter some form of password. I don't know what the password is yet. I need to gather more clues. Alright. That's been fairly typical for the game. A bookcase full of books. Hmm, how fascinating. Vincent took a book off the bookcase and flipped through it. Do you enjoy reading, Benora? Not really. Hmm. Not really? Is it because you can't understand them? Vincent mocked me as he put the book back on the shelf. But how strange it is, don't you think? We're in the basement of the Myers Corporation, yet the bookcase is filled with books on history and philosophy. Those were Vincent's topics at college. Of course, I won't complain, as those happen to be my favorites as well. Okay, keep looking around. Alright, here we have a door. Well, well, having cold feet, are we? Didn't you want didn't you want to know the truth, Venora? Why are you in such a hurry to leave? Of course. If you have simply changed your mind, I won't force you to stay here either. In the end, your past memories have nothing to do with me. Wouldn't you agree? I can't leave yet. I need to find the secret chamber. See what Vincent has to say. Since all Madam wants to know is the truth, why don't we explore the room that is filled with truth together? 
the one and only secret chamber of the G4 cyborg incident is hidden somewhere in this room. Why not use your power to solve the mystery here? So the power he refers to <clears throat> is an ability to see uh, memories by touching an item. Um, some sort of, uh, I guess, the energy tied to the item allows her to see memories of uh, a person associated with it. What the hell happened here? Hmm, interesting. The blood splatters on the wall are fresh. It looks like a fight just happened here before we arrived. Then, this must be a fight between Draco and that monster. So here we have a sign, a vent, and drawers in this cabinet. I'm going to assume those are important. Ventilation duct opening. Nothing special about that. A poster of Meyer Chan. The poster was firmly fixed to the wall with some kind of white glue around it. <clears throat> I picked at it with my finger, but couldn't get it off. Venora, may I ask what your thoughts on the design of Meyer Chan are? The intent of mascots is generally to serve as a bridge between the brand and the user, reflecting the company's spirit and strength. Meyer Chan's look as a mechanical prosthesis may be a bit too straightforward for many people, but I don't think there's any harm in a unique and comical design like this. If you place Meyer Chan next to other corporate mascots, it would stand out simply by making people go, huh, what's this supposed to be? which is also an advantage in some sense. In other words, you believe Meyer Chan has an advantage as a mascot simply because its design is too peculiar, not because it's truly a qualified design. If you have to put it that way, then yes. What about you? As a former lawyer at Meyer Corporation, what's your opinion of the honest design? I thought it looked so hideous that I gave mine to Victor. Guess I can't really blame you for that. Right, let's start checking drawers. Drawers and doors. A cupboard under a drawer. A white mug fell out and shattered on the floor. For some reason, Vincent's face turned sullen. This is probably, probably his favorite coffee mug. Are you mad at me for breaking the mug, Vincent? No. Why would I be mad about? Vincent suddenly lost his balance. Without the support of the wall, he might have already fallen to the floor. Vincent, are you okay? No. Don't come any closer. Vincent held out one of his hands, telling me not to come closer. I'm fine. I don't need you to worry about me. Leaning against the cupboard by the wall, he regained his footing. Let's continue our investigation. A shattered mug. The moment I opened the cupboard, a white mug fell out and shattered on the floor. Why would someone leave a mug full of li four fluid in such a place? Investigate the mug. Yes, please. Be careful, Venora. Don't hurt yourself. I squatted down and carefully touched one of the shards with the tip of my finger. I thought this might trigger something. Here you are, Inspector. You know, something's been bothering me for a while. What is it, Monster M? Inspector, if somebody could get a crystal clear view of anyone's memory, like seeing how a seemingly strong person had actually hidden in a corner and cried out in pain, or the deceit and arguments behind what appears to be a beautiful love story. 
or someone's painful childhood memories that have been repressed in the depths of their mind. What kind of power do you think this person would have in this world? They would be like an all-knowing, all-powerful God. They would see all those things that no one wants to reveal and discover the truth that everyone is trying to hide. Yes, there is no doubt that they could rule the entire world. And my goal is to be that person. Are you saying yes? That's right. Our researchers are getting closer and closer to reaching our success. Soon, I will become an omniscient God. I will be able to see everyone's past and spy deep into their hearts. But strangely enough, ever since this time last year, important research documents and samples belonging to our organization have been disappearing one by one. What's even stranger is they all happen to be related to the research of this power. You mean they were stolen? Someone is trying to steal our organization's research? It's indisputable that this thief is a member of our organization. There's a traitor who wants to acquire this power for themselves? Well, Inspector, have you noticed any suspicious members within the organization? Sorry, I haven't been paying much attention. That's too bad. You know, Inspector, there's something I've always admired about you. Whether you're telling the truth or not, you're always able to keep that innocent look on your face. Monster M, I would never lie to you. You're like a father to me. Oh, am I? But surely, such high-level research material is not something that just anyone can comprehend. Wouldn't you agree? If the thief was able to pinpoint exactly those documents and samples related to this memory reading power, I think he must be one of your researchers. My apologies. Please allow me to pick up the phone. Hello, Monster M speaking. Is that so? I see. Well done. Inspector, looks like I need to take my leave now. Keep being a good girl, all right? Perhaps there's a big secret hidden in this pink envelope. Well, who knows? And by the way, you were right. The thief was indeed one of our researchers. I'll see you later. Monster M has left. From what I've heard, ever since Monster M received a threatening video, he became more and more paranoid. Well, to be honest, I actually have no clue what he was like before that either. Tomorrow, I will visit Vincent Edgeworth's mansion and investigate him using my cover as a detective. But my real objective is to uncover his secret weapon and destroy it. You know... Inspector, there's something I've always admired about you. Whether you're telling the truth or not, you're always able to keep that innocent look on your face. However, I keep thinking about what Monsieur M had said today. At first, it seemed that he suspe suspected me of being the thief, but we actually both knew that this was impossible. The reason is simple. I wasn't even part of this organization a year ago, there's no way I could have stolen those things. And by the way, you were right. The thief was indeed one of our researchers. Just before Monsorian left, he received a phone call. The person on the other end of the phone may have just told him the true identity of the thief. But judging from Monsorian's reaction, everything seemed to be as he expected. Therefore, it is way more likely that Monster M knew who the thief was long before our conversation. In that case, why would Monster M invite me here to have such a seemingly meaningless conversation? And it just happened to be the night before I was going on a mission? Keep being a good girl, alright? Don't touch anything on my desk. Perhaps there's a big secret hidden in this peak envelope. Well, who knows? 
Don't touch anything on the desk. Monster M. I wish you had been more straightforward with your invitation. Monster M has never left me alone in his office before, nor has he ever specifically said such things. It is now obvious to me that he in fact meant quite the opposite. He actually wanted me to look at what was on the desk. Time to investigate the clues here. So we've got the envelope, coffee, computer, and the lamp. Well, he clearly wants me to investigate the envelope, which we'll have to wait. The desk lamp on Monster Ebb's desk. Should I turn it on? Yes. Monster M's mug. At first glance, it looked like it was coffee, but as you got closer, it smelled like hot chocolate. Eh. I'm getting kicked out. Hmm. What is it, Venora? Were you able to see anything? No, not really. Is that so? Then please forgive me for asking such a question. Is there something that's bothering you? You've been looking dazed for a while. Actually, yes. There is indeed something that I just don't understand. Oh? Have you ever wondered why Myers chose to build half-human, half-robotic cyborgs specifically? It seemed like something trivial at first, but I just can't think of an explanation for it. Myers Corporation is a mechanical engineering corporation, producing fully mechanical bionic robots to be much easier for them. If that's the case, why build half-human, half-robotic ones instead? These cyborgs have to constantly feed on human flesh to even maintain their human appearance. No matter how you look at it, that's only going to place a lot more burden on Myers Corporation's shoulders. And that's also what led to the continuous disappearance of citizens in the G4 district. They were being used as cattle feed, which eventually uncovered the whole experiment. Hmm, I see where you're coming from. That's indeed a reasonable question to ask. But Benora, may I ask what you think the real reason for the Myers Corporation experimentation with cyborgs is? This may sound absurd, but I think the Myers Corporation wants to conquer the world. They want to become a new god. And what good would it do them to conquer the world? Isn't it obvious? They would possess endless money and power. Is that so? So you think the Myers Corporation is building half-human, half-robotic cyborgs purely for the sake of power and money? You have realized as well, if that's all Myers Corporation wants, then it's enough for them to keep making the artificial prosthetics that they do. Theoretically, they've already conquered the G4 district, haven't they? It wouldn't be a stretch to bring other districts to their knees in the same way. In that case, I'm sure you can easily conclude that there must be other reasons for the Myers Corporation to start this series of experiments. Benora, let's think about it another way. If you are the Myers Corporation and you think you are a god, what are these cyborgs to you? If I'm Myers Corporation and I think I'm a god, these cyborgs are a new species that I've created. Correct. The Myers Corporation wants more than just money and power. They want to create a new world order. Fedora, have you heard of the Voorhees Corporation by chance? Like Jason Voorhees? That's about different. Lark Voorhees? Um, <laughs> Voorhees Corporation. That's a bioengineering corporation located in the G3 district, isn't it? Yes. Just like Myers, Voorhees used to be an international super monopoly. They shared a similar goal as well. The mutants, as we know them today, were actually the product of Voorhees. Similar to the Myers Corporation, Voorhees Corporation aimed to replace the current human race with a newly created species. 
But the difference is, Voorhees mutants don't need to feed on humans to survive. Even though these mutants have special abilities compared to ordinary humans, people don't necessarily agree that this makes them more superior. Presently, tensions between mutants and humans are particularly high in the G3 district. Some mutants do believe that they are better than ordinary humans, but many humans believe that the mutants are monsters that should not exist, and that humans are the rightful ruler of the earth. Of course, there are also those who believe that the two can live together in harmony. The Myers Corporation witnessed all of that. They came to the conclusion that, if they were going to create a species that is 100% above humans, the survival of that species must depend on the death of humans. Mediocre humans must give up their lives in order to create our utopia. It is a necessary sacrifice. That's what the Myers Corporation thought. I understand now. It is not a flaw that the cyborgs Myers produced need to feed on humans. In fact, it is quite the opposite. That's the intention of the Myers Corporation to begin with. If the cyborgs are placed at the top of the food chain above humans, there will never be a chance for equality between the two. Correct. Well, that was some heavy, uh, heavy information, I guess you would say. Alright, I'm going to re-examine the mug so I can go back into the, the memories and continue investigating what's on this desk. Monster M's laptop. Hmm. Interesting. Underneath the evil exterior lies a cupcake, sweetheart. I feel like I'm not really supposed to see those photos. Oh, Monster M. Vincent. Hmm. This picture looks like a clue of some sort. Well, it does, doesn't it? I think I will snap a photo with my phone just to be safe. Boom. All right. But it does look like a clue. Now let's go for the envelope. The peak envelope is on the desk. Inside was a piece of paper printed with strange rectangles. All right. These are going to correspond to the photo I just saw. It seems to be related to the picture on Monster M's laptop somehow. I do agree with you. Sure, turn it off. I guess the mug will be the way I... Yeah, that's the way I exit, since that's the way I entered into the, the memories. Alright, we'll finish exploring this uh, desk. A cupboard under a drawer. I opened it and took a look. There was nothing in it. Alright, check out the drawer. A drawer! I slide opened it and took a look. Inside were just some discarded papers. All right, how about the other the other drawer? A drawer. I slide opened it and took a look. Inside were just some discarded papers. All right, how about this drawer? Warning, the device will unlock automatically after entering the correct answer. If a wrong answer is entered, the device will return to zero when it reaches six digits. Well, I have no idea what the code might be. Let's look at these photos. Well, yeah, I have no clue. I mean, I see numbers. Maybe I start with that. Which would be pink. Purple, orange, 
orange. Turquoise purple. Ah, that was it. So that was an easier one to solve than the last puzzle the game presented me with. So basically I just looked at the one photo and just went in order as they were numbered and matched each of those blocks to a color and punched them into this device. Access granted. And now we have this, a mysterious box. There is a keyhole in it. What if we use a scalpel and try to pry it open? I can't use the, the atom here. All right. No, I won't keep trying then. And we're back around to here. Hmm. So I need a key, right? Oh, I still have the scalpel active. A bookcase full of books. We're in the basement of the Myers Corporation. Yeah, yeah, we already read that. Now I'm looking to see if I can find anything new because I feel like I need a key. <laughs> oh yeah, so I'm still asking, been asked for the password here and I still don't know it. So that's not help. This is the way I leave. I can speak to Vincent again. Blah, blah, blah. Know the truth. The chamber. Use your power. And we're back here again. Oh. <clears throat> I can use this on this, on the glue around the edge of this poster, I bet. Yes. I took out my scalpel and cut off a portion of the solidified glue along the edge of the poster. Then tore the entire thing off. There's another poster hidden underneath. Hidden underneath Myrotan's poster. And the seemingly lovely Innes of Anora has a secret hidden scalpel. This world sure is full of surprises. Venora, do you know the name of this work? No. I don't. The Destruction of Leviathan. Oh. Yeah. It is a, a book that Vincent was reading back in his college days. It is written in the book of Isaiah that when God comes to earth on Judgment Day, he will punish Leviathan and slay him. The Destruction of Leviathan depicts this scene. Leviathan is the great sea serpent. In the upper right corner of the original work, God can be seen in the sky handling a sword with a fierce look. But in this poster, the part has been cut off. We can only vaguely see his lower limbs. So whoever put the poster up here simply wanted Leviathan to be the center of attention. In the book of Job, Leviathan is portrayed as a vicious creature that is so fierce that anyone who witnesses him will be terrified and overwhelmed. He has teeth so terrible and a mouth so strong that nobody can open f with force. His eyes are depicted as the great light of the morning and his heart as an unbreakable block of stone. It is worth mentioning that Leviathan is also the name of a well-known work of political philosophy. Did you just say that Leviathan is also the name of a phil philosophical work? Yes. In the book, Leviathan is a symbol of power and a metaphor for the author's ideal commonwealth and perfect government. Well, there's clearly something beneath it. I can't use that item here. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's a piece of the uh, a piece of the other poster on top that still remains. But it's not what it looks like. Have I checked all the drawers? Yeah, I did. I did check all the drawers. I'm gonna go back into the memory and see if there's anything here 
that may help now that now that I have uh, uncovered something new. The colors have changed. So that's it. The colors only show up when I turn on the lamp. Okay. Should I turn it on? Yes. And we're back to seeing the colors that we saw before. Okay, so light sensitivity could be a clue. Okay, there's nothing else here. Yeah, so that's it. That is all there is. <laughs> so I do not see anything else. We'll check everything out again. So, the elevator button is no longer working, that I knew. The elevator, that's what I took to get to the basement. Draco and I were pursued by some sort of monster on our way here, and I had no clue what happened after the crash. I don't know what happened to Draco either. All right. Nothing different there. All right, we'll look at the bookshelf again. A bookcase full of books. We're in the basement of the Myers Corporation. If the bookcase is mostly filled with books on history and philosophy. History and philosophy. Philosophy. Ah, here we go. <coughs> Vincent, you mentioned that Leviathan is also the name of a philosophical work, right? That is correct. I swept my eyes quickly over each of the book's titles. Being in Nothingness, Republic, the birth of tragedy. Here it is, Leviathan. I took Leviathan off the bookcase and opened it. As I had expected, the inside of the book is actually completely hollow. Hidden inside is a key. Collected item. A key. All right. Progress. Back around to the mysterious box. The box is unlocked. Okay. What I find inside is... <laughs> is this... Gucci, Penelope, and Boss. Those are the names of my three cats. Victor's eyes and arms. Isn't this a picture of you guys at university? Vincent didn't answer. He looked away to the other side of the room. There's a date here, RMU 32-2017. So this is going to be the computer code or the password to the computer. So let me snap a picture of that. And I'm also going to snap a screenshot because I really like this. Okay, so now we can go back to the computer, punch in our code our password and should be able to make some more progress yes you know the password oops so I don't know if I need to do the whole thing <coughs> rmu 3 slash 2 slash 2077 Access denied. <coughs> hmm. Perhaps all you need to enter are the missing characters. <coughs> I considered that, Vincent. R U um, three seven. Access granted. Okay. I can do it with that. and the secret chamber. Well done, Benora. Hmm. My vision blurred as soon as the secret chamber opened. 
I can no longer see my surroundings, but I can vaguely sense a black shadow appearing in front of me. <laughs> Do you remember now? Your mission? She was staring straight at me with a creepy smile on her face. My mission? You know what I mean, don't you? I'm sure you do. That man has to die. She turned around and began to walk slowly, bit by bit, towards the chamber. That man has to die. I watched her step into the chamber until her whole body was swallowed by the darkness. What was that thing? What? What is it, Venora? Why are you still hesitating? Vincent didn't seem to catch that strange sight. Ladies first. His smile still makes me feel uneasy. I didn't say anything more. After a few seconds of hesitation, I gathered my courage and walked into the secret chamber. I could feel Vincent following me closely. Those dark green walls and that dim light, the sight in front of me didn't surprise me. The chamber looked exactly like the one I saw earlier in the cyborg's eyeball. And all around me were bloodthirsty cyborgs chained to the wall. But at that moment, the only thing that caught my attention was this one cyborg in front of me. He kept lunging at me like a murderous beast, but the limb restraints made it difficult for him to move an inch. The way he looked, wait a minute, there's no doubt that he is the same cyborg I saw from the memory of that eyeball. No, it's more than that. Everything I'm seeing right now feels so familiar. I very clearly remember the scene that I saw when I picked up that cyborg's eyeball. It's exactly the same as what I'm seeing now. I don't understand. Was I not seeing the past memories of that cyborg, but my own present experience? I thought back to everything I had experienced since coming to the Myers Corporation. I suddenly realized something, something that I had overlooked this whole time. What is it, Venora? Have you discovered anything new? It was you all along, wasn't it, Vincent? Well, obviously. Was it? Vincent wasn't phased at all. Instead, he had a contemptuous smile on his face. The graffiti outside the Myers Corporation. The invitation letter and the four-digit code on the, of the employee's passageway. The history and philosophy books in the basement. And that college photo in the box. From the time I arrived at Myers until now, I had always assumed that the experiments here were conducted by the secret underground Myers Corporation themselves. But that doesn't make any sense, does it? Why would the Myers Corporation call themselves murderer and use the same combination as the employee access password? And that party, on the same day as your accident, why would that have been the beginning of the nightmare for the Myers Corporation? Why would the bookcase in the basement here be filled with your favorite books on philosophy and history? And why is that college photo of you and Victor a clue to unlocking the secret chamber? If you think about it, there can only be one explanation. Because this whole time, it wasn't the secret underground Myers Corporation that was still conducting experiments here. It was you, Vincent Edgeworth. Hmm, an interesting theory, indeed. It seems that I can't really blame you for thinking that way. If your suspicions are correct, then why would I come here to help you expose myself? It's simple. This is all part of your plan. For Vincent to expose himself to me? In the case of the G4 cyborg incident, you, as the lawyer for the Myers Corporation, pinned all of the blame on Winston Loomis. To cover up the fact that the cyborg experiment was planned by the Myers Corporation themselves. And yet, instead of being valued by the Myers Corporation, you were almost instant you were almost killed in their carefully orchestrated car accident. You tried your very best and devoted everything you had to them, but all they did was discard you like a pawn. 
So with this grudge against them, you decide to take your revenge on the Myers Corporation. To defeat the Myers Corporation and become the one in control, you needed to master technology even more advanced than theirs, and become even more frightening than the Myers Corporation. Having come to this conclusion, you decided to rescue Winston from prison and made a deal with him to reassemble the cyborgs that the Myers Corporation had discarded, and together develop a new technology that would strike fear into Myers. That technology is what I have inside me, the ability to see others past. Not only that, you actually knew very well that the Myers Corporation was conducting similar research, but their progress was very slow. So you made a deal with a member of Myers' secret organization and had him assist you in stealing all the documents and samples related to the research into this power by the Myers Corporation. Around the same time, you sent Myers a threatening video suggesting that you were developing a secret weapon, which caused them great paranoia. After you obtained everything you needed, you brutally murdered the member, that member and used his corpse as cattle feed for your reconstituted cyborgs. His name was Dr. Richard Amanon. He was tragically found dead in his apartment with his body ripped apart. And after that, I was sent to your mansion as a detective to investigate the recent disappearances and the truth behind the G4 cyborg incident. Strangely enough, I can't remember what happened after that. I woke up in your mansion and had lost all my memories. But unexpectedly, I gained the power to see other people's past, which I didn't possess before. But the clues I discovered at the Myers Corporation told me. On the night that I came to your mansion, in fact, you and I vis visited this building, the old Myers Corporation, together as a pair. I haven't yet figured out what really happened that night, but what I do know is, you're the corp corporate, 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 I stumble with it, over that word, um, you're the culprit behind the disappearances that have happened in the G4 district over the past few years. You've been secretly reassembling cyborgs here with Winston. You need cattle feed to keep them alive. And me, I was used by you as a guinea pig to test this new power you created, the power to see other people's memories. Somehow, you erased my memory to see if I could, to see if I could utilize my new power to find clues about my past. You set up the old Myers Corporation building as a testing ground for me and designed all sorts of puzzles. Then lied to me about finding a Myers Corporation business card in my pocket when I woke up in your mansion and lured me here to begin your experiment. Well, how's that? Is there anything else that I need to explain? Hmm. Well done, Venora. You're truly impressive. Impressive? In other words... You don't deny anything I've said. Correct. I admit that I am indeed the one behind everything. However, I must comment, there's one fatal error in your near-perfect reasoning. How do you know that you're really Venora, cyborg lady? Weren't you the one who called me Venora first? True, but have you forgotten, as we discussed before, a person's personality is determined by how much they remember. The reason why I call you Venora is because your demeanor is the same as hers. In other words, I know you have recovered the memory of Venora's and think you are her. But if that same memory was given to another cyborg, they too would think they were Venora, wouldn't they? You're toying with me. I don't believe you. Venora. Do you perhaps remember the date of the day you came to my mansion as a detective? Yes. It was December 1st, 2086. And do you know what the date is today? No, I don't. Today is March 5th, 2087. That's right. You have absolutely no clue what has happened in the last three months. The real Venora is long gone. I apologize, Venora. I'm afraid I must end our conversation here. If I have to be honest, I too did not wish to see everything in this way. However, I have no choice but let you spend the rest of your life here with your kind. Uh, ah. Uh. 
But why? Why are you doing this? If I'm not the real Venora, why are you doing this to me? What did I do to you? Venora or not, your heart belongs to the Myers Corporation. Your body reeks of decay, and your soul embodies putrid cor corruption. She is yours now, my friends. Wait! Wait! What's happening? I bet it's Draco. Amidst the chaos, I subconsciously reached out with my right hand and grabbed the closest, most accessible thing to me. Oh, she's going to a memory. Vincent's tie. I don't remember why I did that, but what I do remember is, when I grabbed his tie, my vision started to blur again. The last thing I saw was a hint of panic on Vincent's face. Investigation completed. Successfully located the secret chamber. Vincent Edgeworth, is it? Here's your package. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're back in their college dorm. Oh, hey, Vincent, there you are. I was wondering why I hadn't seen you in the library. What's wrong, Vincent? You look a little down. Let me guess. Did that international kid from G2 piss you off again? No. Then what's the matter? Did something happen? I was hired by the Myers Corporation. I received my job offer letter from then today. Oh! What did you just say? That's wonderful news, Vincent. Congratulations. We should celebrate. Uh-huh. Vincent, hasn't it been your lifelong dream to work for the Myers Corporation? Why are you looking so glum? Yes, it is indeed my dream to work at the Myers Corporation. It's just, it also means that everything at RMU is about to end. I never thought I would feel such deep sorrow about leaving here. My four years here have just flown by. Yeah. It's all coming to an end, isn't it? I still vividly remember the first day we met. I can't believe that was four years ago. Speaking of which, the class will be having a graduation party tonight. Would you like to come with me, Vincent? Not interested. <laughs> I'm not surprised at all. You know, Vincent, they are all your friends. There's nothing wrong with seeing them one last time. Wouldn't you agree? They are not my friends. Maybe you don't feel that way, but they do. They see you as their friend. I don't want to be friends with him. Just having you is enough. <laughs> then how about just the two of us? Just you and me. There will be nobody else. You're almost out of university, yet you've never had a drink, have you? My favorite bar is downtown G4. Let me take you there like a date. What do you think? When? How about five o'clock tonight? Five o'clock isn't tonight, but it's like, it's not even this evening, really. Anyway, I'll drive us there. Of course, that also means I won't be able to drink tonight. It's a deal then. Are you ready, Vincent? Huh? Wait a second. Did you use hair gel on your head? What? No. Not only that, you've also changed into a new suit. <laughs> Do you really think that this was a date, Vincent? You have some nerve to say that. Do you really think I can't smell the cologne you're wearing? Ha. Ha ha. Okay. You got me there. Anyway, shall we get going then?
Did you know an estimated 50 to 80 percent of life on Earth is located under the surface of the oceans? The oceans contain 99 percent of the living space on the planet, and humans have only explored less than 10 percent of that space. Not only that, but the oceans account for 96 percent of all the water on the surface of the Earth, and the remainder is all fresh water in the form of rivers, lakes, and ice. At the same time, the ocean absorbs about 25% of the CO2 emitted to the atmosphere from human activities each year. This greatly reduces the impact of greenhouse gas on the climate. The ocean sure is incredible and full of wonder. Wouldn't you say so, Vincent? Haha, <laughs> oh my god, you sound just like him. I heard that the guy's getting a PhD after he graduates. After that, he's going back to G2 to take over his father's company. Oh really? I have absolutely zero interest in knowing his future career plans. Bartender, please make me another martini. See? I knew you would enjoy martinis. Then what about you, Victor? What are your plans after graduation? Like you, I've been hired by a company. I'll be working in their investment department. That's wonderful news to hear, Victor. I'm happy for you. Really? You don't look so happy to me. No. No, believe me, I really am. It's just that I was thinking, these may be the final days we get to sit side by side like this. Guess you're getting too attached to me then, huh? Does going into the Myers Corporation alone make you nervous? Sometimes it really feels like you're reading my mind. Huh, what's this? A graduation present from me. Since you're going to be working at the Myers Corporation, I thought you would maybe consider changing your outfit. The black tie gives a more professional feel, don't you think? Thank you, Victor. I will treasure it. Listen, my friend. What I'm going to say next may sound a little cheesy, but these were all words that come from the bottom of my heart. Do you remember the day we first met each other in our dorm? How could I ever forget? To tell the truth, I never thought we would become best friends when I met you that day. I know, I did say to you that I was sure we would become great friends. However, I didn't really mean it at the time. But you've changed me so much in the last four years. Perhaps you don't even realize it yourself. Every second I'm with you, I feel like my life is full of meaning. You've helped me regain my purpose. I want to be an outstanding person like you, Vincent. But more importantly, I want to stay with you and keep being there for you. I'm sure that you achieve so many great things when you enter the Myers Corporation. Because I know you, and I know that there's nothing Vincent Edgeworth can't possibly do. But I also can't deny that your journey at the Myers Corporation won't always be smooth. You're going to face all kinds of challenges and inevitably setbacks, some big, some small. But I want you to know that whenever you feel overwhelmed and need a hand, whenever you need someone to reflect on the ups and downs of life with, you'll have a dear friend always waiting for you at the investment department at the Myers Corporation. Could, could this be my job offer letter from the Myers Corporation. I'm sorry, Vincent Edgeworth. I'm afraid you're not getting rid of me yet. It's a nice little closing scene. Finn, Vincent, are you crying? Nothing is predestined in life. I've always believed that, ever since I was a child. A person's destiny can be changed by no one but themselves. But at that moment, I finally realized I was wrong, so terribly wrong. The day we met at RMU, the moment he entered my life, everything was destined to change. Coming to RMU was my fate. Meeting him was my fate. Getting to know him was my fate. I just remembered that there is a pet store near the bar. Wanna go see some kittens? 
But just as one person is enough to transform your life, a corporation full of sin is also enough to take everything away from you. Vincent, the company is in big trouble. <clears throat> you have to make them believe that it's all his fault, or this might be over for us. My name is Vincent Edgeworth. I am a former attorney at the Myers Corporation. To many people, an attorney stands for law and justice. Yet my life is filled with nothing but sin. I do whatever it takes to achieve my aims. Forged evidence, bribery, everything. It sounds selfish, doesn't it? But it was all for the best of my company. My one and only dream company. I've never lost a single case I've taken on, even this one. Yet the company paid me back by trying to kill me in a car accident. Uh, uh, <clears throat> pain. Every single bone in my body was crushed. Crimson blood filled my vision. But somehow, I survived. The next thing I remember, I was lying on a piece of cold metal. My body couldn't move, but I could faintly hear voices around me. Remove the organs. Begin implanting the endoskeleton. Ah, uh, uh. I wanted to struggle. I wanted to scream. But all I could do was watch it happen. After hours of operation, I was placed inside the secret chamber. Countless tubes penetrated my torso. Standing in front of me were the core members of the Myers Corporation. No, there was another figure. A figure that seemed so familiar, but at the time seemed different. My... Mr. Myers. Feed him. A piece of raw meat was thrown in front of me. Human flesh. I felt disgusted, but I couldn't help but engulf it. Leave him in the chamber and observe his behavior. Yes, Monster M. Wait. Don't go. Tell me, why? Why are you doing this? I did everything you asked. I devoted everything I had to this company. I know, Vincent. I know. I've seen all your efforts. And that's why I know. You would be willing to take this little pain for the company too, wouldn't you? No, no. Goodbye, Vincent Edgeworth. I hope you survive. No, no. I don't remember how long I was kept there. Every day, every second in the chamber felt so long. Revolting chunks of flesh, torn skin, and the unbearable pain. I felt that living was worse than death. I just wanted everything to be over. My black tie. It had long been stained crimson with blood. Victor. I wonder how that guy is doing now. What would he think if he sees the monster I've become? Is this all part of my fate? To join the Myers Corporation alongside him, but then never be able to see him again? I'm the naive one after all. This entire time, I was just another one of Myra's pawns. I was never truly accepted by them. Huh. You're asking me if a person's fate could possibly be changed? If I have to be honest, I can't really give you an exact answer either. But what I do know is, if that man is Vincent Edgeworth, then he will never let anyone dictate his destiny. No. 
Destiny or not, this isn't the ending I wanted. They can crush every bone in my body and slice off every inch of my skin. But I, Vincent Edgeworth, cannot accept spending the rest of my life here in this rotting, reeking chamber. I have so much more to achieve, and I have so many things that I want to see again. Even if I am no longer human, even if it's no longer possible for me to return to a normal life. As long as I have one last gasp, I will claw my way back through hell. No, that's not enough. I will make every core member get what they deserve. I will let them know what it feels like to have their bodies torn apart. I will make Myers Corporation pay a painful price. You saw all of that. It was you. You were the one who murdered all the core members. What exactly are you? Me? What am I? Can't you tell? I'm a product of the Myers Corporation. Just like you. Take a good look. This is how Myers Corporation treats a lawyer who has done everything he could for them. I know Myers isn't gone yet, but soon. I will clean them all up. I let go of Vincent's tie and ran out of the chamber at lightning speed. Outside the chamber, I once again saw that mysterious figure. She was standing next to the box, seemingly hinting at something to me. I took the photo out, of the, out from the box and placed it in my pocket, then quickly ran to the next room. Venora! Venora! Draco, is that you? Venora, Vincent is going berserk. You need to get out of there now. What do I do? You need to first restore power to this room by operating the two control panels connected to the breaker box. This will reactivate the eight touch monitors on the wall. After that, match all the corresponding symbols on the screens and the entrance to the next room will unlock. I have unlocked the door behind you, but I can only hold him off. No, I have locked the door behind you, but I can only hold him off for so long. Please hurry. All right, room one. Uh, what the flip? Uh... Oh, wow. I got super lucky there. I had no idea what I was trying to do. These are numbers puzzles. I can do these. Fourteen. Yeah, I can do numbers puzzles all day, man. I'm not always going to complete them correctly, but I can do them. I love working them. Perfect. Now all you have to do is match all the corresponding symbols on the screen. I don't know what you mean. A watch. And Mr. Chat, not Mr. Chappie, whatever. This is a, this is just a game of memory. This is really easy. <laughs> Good work, Venora. Now all that's left to do. Whoa.
Venora, did you really think that you could get away? Ha 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 ha. So creepy. Judgment Day for the Myers Corporation has fallen upon us. Live or die. Warning. From here on, you will need to answer a series of questions, play mini games, and solve puzzles to escape from Vincent. I think this is an excellent time to save the game. You will only be able to make two mistakes. Making more than two mistakes or exceeding the time limit will immediately lead to death. Saving would be a great idea now. Beat you to it. <clears throat> Question one. Venora, here you are, standing face to face with me at this moment. Do you think it is fate for us to be here? Do you believe in fate? Fate and actions are intertwined. Nothing in this world is purely a coincidence or the outcome of what we do. This moment, as I stand here confronting you, is the result of our intertwining fates and actions. Vincent, I saw your past. I know you spent all your youth chasing your dream. Getting into the Myers Corporation was your dream come true. It was not fate that got you into the Myers Corporation. It was because you worked hard for it. However, there are also things that you just can't change. After all, it was your fate to become an outcast and be forced to leave the Myers Corporation because you didn't belong there. How? How did you... A look of shock appeared on Vincent's face, but then it changed to one of excruciating pain. I ran to the exit of the room. Venora! Alright, tap the space bar and hit the red target to escape Vincent. I've, I've done these before. <clears throat> I'm not safe here, but this door should be enough to hold Vincent off for a while. I need to solve the puzzle here and get out of this room as soon as possible. Room 2. Project name ICIJ. Classification Confidential. Mars Corporation's cutting edge technology has constantly been misinterpreted by many in the world. And this misalignment is bound to bring resistance to the Myers Corporation Cyborg re Regeneration Program. In order to ensure the implementation of the plan without any deviation, we must make the necessary sacrifices to assure its eventual success. <clears throat> the Myers Corporation will primarily focus on the training of specially selected employees to strengthen their abilities. The main purpose of the program is to purge any possible threats to the development of the Myers Corporation regardless of any means or cost. Member Chaser. This member is highly efficient, decis decisive, and rarely makes mistakes. Their lethal power and the quick reaction undoubtedly makes them the top ranking of the task force for the elimination, for eliminating any threats to the Myers Corporation. Rating 9 of 10. Member Infiltrator. This member is good at blending into crowds and remaining undetected, allowing them to easily sneak into various different situations. The downside is that their work, their work ethic could really be improved as they are extremely reluctant to do any actual work. Rating 7 of 10. Member Janitor. This member has incredible speed and can freely move inside and outside the corporation grounds. Has an inexplic inexplicable obsession with garbage and task themselves with keeping all the grounds and equipment sanitary. Rating 10 of 10. Member Inspector. This member has the uncanny ability to observe, observe and reason. 
typically noticing many details that were glossed over by others. Additionally, they are an incredible liar and can easily mask the true emotions. Rating 8 of 10. Okay. A teddy bear. A bucket. Some bullets. A Rubik's Cube. High tech wristband. Professional uniforms. And a flashlight. Alright, we gotta restore power to the room. Got it. Oh man, I have no idea. So the last one, whoa, okay, jeez, why do I keep doing that? Okay, so this that's the last one, the one that looks like a broom. I'm gonna snap some pictures so I can remember what's what. Okay, before that was Infiltrator. No, before that was Inspector. The uniform is going to be Infiltrator. I think the flashlight. The wristband. I think Oops. so I think this is the symbol for the inspector I keep hitting escape okay and then we had crap what was the other one the infiltrator, which is going to be the uniforms. Alright, that's that one. So the first one was Chaser. I want to go back and hear about the chaser again. Highly efficient, decisive, and rarely makes mistakes. Lethal power and quick reaction makes them top ranking in task force for limiting threats. Yeah. I'm going to assume the chaser is the bullets. Which was this one? Nope. Alright. I have no idea if I'm even approaching this the right way. <clears throat> Let's assume that I am. In which case, we're going to do Chaser, Infiltrator, Inspector, Janitor. That wasn't it. Janitor. I'm doing a reverse order. I feel pretty good about the first one. I mean, about to, all about the first one. So we're just gonna do this.
No? Alright, I have no idea. So... I will be right back while I look this up, because I'm not just going to sit here and bang my head against this puzzle. I'm not a fan of... Not a fan of doing that. Actually, just walk through right here. Okay, I will be right back. Okay, the part I was missing is that it's highly dependent on the scores. And that I was not thinking about. So, the order for the combination is janitor, and then chaser, um, which was this one. Then Inspector, which was this one, and then Infiltrator, which was this one. Yeah, I was, I was missing the whole score thing, and so I would have not figured that out. Alright, to all ICIJ members. In order to enhance security of the Myers Corporation, starting today, the code for the input panel of the power supply system to this room will be changed periodically. Also at the same time, we will randomly select four members for assessment. The code for the power supply system will reflect this. Oh, okay, we've already done that. Okay, so this is active now. And that was just a trial and error thing. Uh oh. The unbearable torture of my being cr body being crushed. The agonizing pain of my blood being drained. I remember everything, Venora. I remember it all. And I will never forgive the Myra Corporation. I will slaughter them all, each and every one of them. Question two. As long as I'm still alive, as long as I still have my last breath, I will search every corner of the G4 district, track down every remaining Myra scum, 
tear off every inch of their skin and grind their bodies into a fine dust. Deceit, betrayal, six long years of waiting. I will have my revenge. Venora, are you prepared for your judgment? You will still be a monster. Oh, murdering the entire Myers Corporation, you say? To be honest, I don't really care. Even if that's your plan, I'm not going out of my way to stop you. But Vincent, you need to realize there's one thing that you cannot change. Whether the Myers Corporation exists or not, you are and will always be a monster. Rejected by society with no future. Oh, I know what you're thinking. No, I still have Victor. I'm not alone. But Vincent, Victor's not like you. He's just a human. Sooner or later you'll lose him, and then you will have nothing left in this world. What? What did you say? Vincent's expression was filled with even more sorrow. A steady stream of blood flowed from his eye socket. Keep pushing, Benora. You're almost there. Soon I'll be able to escape. <sighs> okay. That's a lot of stuff. July 23rd, 2081. Sunny. I never thought that Victor would actually agree to my request. Although he's always the first person to help me with my trouble, no matter what I've asked of him. My request this time is just unprecedented. In order to accomplish it, Victor will have to make a huge sacrifice. I must admit that I feel very guilty and simultaneously worried. Because I'm not sure how seriously this will affect him, but I have no choice. Victor is the only person I can trust. This role has to be filled by no one but him. May 17, 2084. Rain. The carrier has been cultured in the containment unit, and the memories have been successfully implanted into the memory core. Victor did have one request. He wanted all memories to take place before that thing happened. Although the carrier won't actually remember those, I can understand why Victor would want, would want that. I complied. May 15th, 2084, Cloudy. No, this isn't even possible. Everything was going so well. But his eyes, I couldn't believe it. They looked exactly the same. Unlike the text before, the last line of the diary looks like it was hastily written with a trembling hand. Okay. I need to first restore the power, all right. Okay, this I can totally work. I can totally solve this. I just need a picture as a reference. Oh wait, can I? Can I solve this? One. Let's see, 7, 8, 5, 17, 11, 4.
Yeah, you got five, six. Um, seven, eight. Nope. Let's try that one. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 11, 17. No idea, I just guessed. I said I could do this. But what order do we do them in? I have no idea. I'm just looking it up. I'll be back. Okay, so this was just me kind of misunderstanding the go of this one. So I need to, there were the numbers written on the walls. I just need to punch in those numbers. So 3, 5, 11, 7, 3, 3, 5, 8, 11, 17. So 3, 5, uh, where do I get an eight? Eight, eleven, seventeen. All right. Yeah. So that would just again. My problem was not really, not really grasping. I should have. I, I knew those numbers were important, but I was just misinterpreting this grid as being something you had to do all blocks in, in order and not that I had to do just certain ones. I don't even have the start of an idea on this one. I'm just going to look it up. I know this seems lame, but I just, I don't want to fumble around here. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, I just looked this one up. So a cigarette, which I, I honestly did not recognize that as a cigarette. Martini, and then the suit. Right. I found some of these puzzles to not, just to not be ones that I would figure out on my own. Venora. Vincent, you really are quite persistent. Take a look at yourself and what you've become. Are you really that obsessed with killing me? Venora, is running away the only thing you can manage? 
Me? Running away? Pfft. Vincent, why can't you see it? You're the one who has really been running away all this time. What are you saying? Question three. Question the third. Ask yourself this, Vincent. Do you really think this is all Myra's fault? You constantly tell yourself that Myra's is the cause of all your misfortunes. But the truth is, you just don't want to face a fact that is obvious to you. You just can't change what's already happened. Face it, Vincent. You're just using your revenge to distract yourself from something you can't accept. Because in your heart, you don't want to admit that what happened in the past can no longer be changed. Perjury, bribery, you committed countless crimes as a lawyer, but you did not do those because you wanted to. Yes, Myers Corporation was the dream company you worked so hard to get into. Of course you would do anything for them. That's what you tell yourself, isn't it? But the truth is, you just wanted to fit in. You just wanted to be accepted by Myers. Ever since your childhood, you've always been a kid who was excluded by others. Despite that, you never tried to hide who you really were until you entered the Myers Corporation. You started to put on a fake smile. You started to imitate others just because you wanted to be accepted by them. But just when you thought everything was going so smoothly, all of that happened. Only then did you realize how foolish you had, be, you had been. You want to go back in time? You want to go back to RMU and start over again? I pulled the picture of Vincent and Victor together at university out of my pocket. That, that is... Vincent stretched out his non-existent right hand to reach for the picture. It's only when you're with Victor that you take your mask off and show who you really are. You always seem so impatient with him, but that's the real you. Everything was ordinary then, but it was a happy time of your life. You missed that time. But sadly, Vincent, I tore the photo into pieces. You can never go back in time. You can't change what has already happened. No, no. Safe. Vincent wanted to charge at me, but as he tried to do so, his crumbling body made him collapse to the ground. Well, Vincent. I walked up to Vincent, who was lying on the ground and unable to move. Since your wish is simply unattainable, could you do me a favor then? I lifted my right foot and stomped it into Vincent's face. Please give up your feudal, your feudal efforts and disappear from this world. I lifted my blood-stained foot and stomped his face again. You already caused so much trouble for the Myers Corporation. If you could do us this one small favor, we'd greatly appreciate it. Again and again and again, I felt the same emotions welling up inside me as when I sliced open the cyborg's chest. It felt exhilarating. Before I realized it, the part above Vincent's neck was completely flattened. Finally. Now all there is left to do is finish my mission. I started to walk towards the exit. As expected, I met that man again outside the room. Venora. I'm so glad you're okay. How is Finn my master doing he's dead w what how Draco couldn't believe what he was hearing his whole body began to tremble 
I killed him. I nonchalantly, nonchalantly added. But, Venora, but why? Why did you do that? What's the matter? Was Vincent that important to you? My voice was toneless as I questioned him. Do you even need to ask? He's my master. No, more importantly, he's my brother. After a few seconds of silence, I walked over to Draco. The Venora, what are you? I leaned on Draco, wrapped my arms around his waist and hugged him tightly. I buried my head in his chest. I'm sorry, Draco. I had no choice. I didn't want to kill him either. But I know you will forgive me, right? I eagerly looked up at Draco. Because to you, I'm more important than Vincent. Isn't that right? But... But... I raised my left hand and gently touched Draco's cheek with the tips of my fingers. I could feel his face heating up. Draco, let it just be you and me. Just the two of us. We don't need Vincent. Let us both escape from here and live together forever. V Venora? After a moment of hesitation, Draco slowly raised his arms and wrapped them around me. Ah, ah! I took out the scalpel I'd been hiding in my pocket and thrust it deep into Draco's chest. Again, and again, and again. Found it! From Draco's shredded chest, I pulled out a round spherical device. Unbelievable. So Vincent's so-called secret weapon is a cyborg made from his own genes and young Victor's memories. Honestly, now that I think about it, you and Victor are indeed alike. Whenever you become too obsessed with someone, you lose all rationality. Forgive me, Draco. I do appreciate all the help you've provided. However, my mission is to destroy you. I tossed Draco's memory core aside and began to slowly approach him with my scalpel. I deserve this. Hmm? This is all my fault. I'm sorry, Vidora. I'm sorry I couldn't save you. Goodbye, Draco. After that, I took the elevator from the other end of the basement back to the lobby of the Myers Corporation alone. When I walked out of the Myers Corporation, I realized it was already the next morning. A man in blue a man in blue greeted me at the gate as if he'd been expecting me. Oh, Inspector. It's been a while. Welcome back to the Underground Myers Corporation. Hmm. What is it, Inspector? What's upsetting you? What are these tears about? And uh, looks like that's a wrap. So like I mentioned at the start, um, based on the devlogs, this is intended for um, six chapters. These four are the ones that exist today. Although in honesty, it wrapped up very well. So I don't know if the ending stays the same and additional chapters are going to be inserted kind of in the middle or if it'll pick up chapter five Ooh, excuse me if it'll pick up just where we just left off um so i'm interested in seeing what it looks like if it ever gets finished but either way i was pleased with it 
It was an enjoyable playthrough. Very, uh, very polished. I thought the uh, the visuals were great. Had good music, good use of music specifically. Um, the writing was was pretty good. The story was interesting. And uh, considering it was created by one one person, that was really expensive. Uh, really um, impressive. In other words, by taking advantage of Benora and Vincent's past memories, Monster M wants to turn them against each other. Don't you see? Monster M is expecting that woman to come back to Myers Corporation. By making use of her special power, he wants to make her misunderstand her very own past. Let's just say, in the absence of all your memories, if all you see of your own past are heinous crimes, you would definitely think that you are just a wicked person as well. Hmm, in that case, we must interfere with Monster M's plan and stop her from investigating the Myers Corporation. She needs to remember who she truly was before falling into Monster M's trap. Ha, ah, my dear, my dear infiltrator. Did you really think everything was going to be so effortless? What you don't know is, her power isn't as simple as seeing the past. She can also see uh, possibilities of the future. What did you just say? Lady Late? Lady Late? With all due respect, napping here is not the most sensible choice. Chapter 4 The End To be continued. Alright. So as I was saying, I do hope um, that I get to see the end of the game. Um, so I'll keep an eye on it. That's definitely going to be on my wish list. The impression that I got is that the developer is taking a bit of a hiatus from new material, focusing on other things, and I believe he said that chapter four had taken like eight or nine months. So my my assumption is it will be you know a couple years at the at the soonest before the entire game is finished. So we'll see. Um, so I guess uh, I guess that's going to wrap things up today. I will be back on later today for the evening stream uh, that I do every Tuesday and Thursday. I try to start around 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And I hope that I will finish up um, Necro Barista Final Pour. <clears throat> That's my goal for today. Tomorrow morning, <clears throat> excuse me, tomorrow morning I'll be back with. Um, my regular morning stream starting around you know the normal time 6 a.m. or so Eastern Time my intention is to begin playing Distraint 2 I played through the uh, Distraint um, the original on switch recently and enjoyed it and so uh, I got a good deal on the sequel for PC, so I thought I would pick up with it and uh, start playing through it. So that w is my goal for uh, what I'll be starting tomorrow morning. So that should be a good, a good time. Uh, I enjoyed the first one quite a bit. So that's why it's coming up for the stream. I want to thank everyone for dropping in. Always appreciate that. I hope to see you. Uh, See you on a future stream, and I hope you have a wonderful day ahead, and I'll catch you next time.